Most people in life are looking at how to make a life worth living in retirement with having. We all know that in order to do that, we have to have an income or revenue from a business. To have income, we have to know how much we need to earn and how much we need to learn in order to actually keep a job today, to be employed today by an employer who's going to pay us. The job hourly wage that we choose is based on our knowledge at that present time of the world and what is and isn't available to you based on your upbringing and background and what you understand about what you can and can't make. There are other people that comes from other upbringings and backgrounds with regard to what they can and can't make or what they should and shouldn't take for income. There are also business owners that prefer to manage their time and freedom of time is a real valuable thing and resource to most business owners. Actual practical freedom of being able to move around a community and go traveling and still make a living and have a business is something that a lot of network marketers and affiliate marketers do. But it does take some time to grow those businesses. At the same time, if we get into a problem, we end up getting it thrown in our face and in our laps. But when someone is helping us to pay for a few things to keep us afloat so that we can get back to life and be rebuilding what we're doing and making a living at, we have the right to say yes or to decline. But no one has the right to take over our personhood, and no one has the right to take over our property, and no one has the right to presume that they know what we're thinking. And most definitely, no one has the right to take over our possessions. You see, our possessions belong to us. Our shelter may or may not belong to us based on how we're living. If we're living on the side of the road, then we're living on the side of the road and we have the freedom in America to be there. Because generally speaking, people are pretty compassionate and they don't try to piss on people who are impoverished. At the same time, we have to have enough money, first and foremost, for food and sustenance. And that's usually where our focus is when we're impoverished. Beyond that, we're trying to find that job or build that business practice that will give us a living, make us an earning. But if we have people walking around the community with our haircut and our beard style and showing off our materials that are truly ours in the marketing world, what they're doing is called false advertising. What they're also doing is committing identity theft. What they're also doing a lot of times is absolutely committing fraud because they're trying to produce a life on our work. And they might be producing income on our documents. And openly they might be literally producing us a bad reputation but can really harm us in lawfulness. Now, as I talk about all these things, I think you're getting this, that I have been a victim of cybercrime, I have been a victim of identity theft, and I most definitely has been a victim of fraud, that people in our communities have benefited from hearing about my ideas and my work. But generally speaking, I do not talk to the impoverished community about my work. I have never provided anyone who is homeless or penniless or a panhandler or a mendicant or anyone like that copies of my documents. So if police officers wanted to pick people off the, the fucking bench that they're sitting on and help them to get a job, marvelous. But if they want to put them in jail for the things they've done illegally and immorally with the house of the Lord, then what they have to do is simply roll them and find out what's in them. But when I say that, you don't have the fucking right to roll me because I've done nothing wrong. But if you've got somebody walking around the community saying, I'm priest, or I'm Blake Ensign, or I'm this, or I'm that, and openly you've got someone committing fraud. No.